precious. You know the thing about digital cameras? You can take like eight pictures and the batteries burn out. That's what happens What's to ours. What's up with that? I don't know. Technology. You gotta love it. Good afternoon. Welcome to the College of the Mainland Poetry Reading here at the College of the Mainland Open House. Glad everyone could make it. Uh, not sure we have an official order of poem, uh, po poets, poets to read here today. Uh, we do have an official order. Okay, I don't know what the order is, but we're going to let them proceed. It's kind of an open mic kind of event. Uh, these are creative writing students at the College of the Mainland for the most part. Uh, I'm sure we have some others too. I don't know. Where's the audience? I thought you said there was an audience. There was, but they laughed. She's our audience. Okay. Enjoy. Angela's my friend. Yeah. Angela. Angela. Introduce yourself. Hi. Tell us who you are. Hi, I'm Angela kids. Miller. Do I have to do the no, thing? No, 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 no. no. Okay, so you can't there you see go. Behind. Can you see me? That's all right. Can you stand right here? Yeah, you're good. Okay, you're good. Get a mic on your t-shirt. Get a mic on your t-shirt. Get a mic on my t-shirt. No, you're fine. I am a if you're loud enough, you don't need it. I get that. I know you're You can go anytime you want. Hi, I'm Angela Miller, and I've got a poem, Sunday Morning Soliloquy. Sizzling and spitting, sweet smell of bacon, caught in the eddies of his whirlwind. Taz like spinning and flitting across the linoleum where eggs have plopped and greasy drops are splattered and met with a quick dry swipe of mom's good dish towel. Stepping and slipping, chip, chopping and hopping, flipping and flopping out omelets for three young daughters, sleepy eyed, mesmerized, an audience awed by the wind in their lives, whistling and humming to Mario Alonzo, singing on the record player, a symphony of pings and pangs of pots and Italian opera. I'm Justin Wicker, and this piece is called Worship at Nine. Fraud, theft, lies, don't trust. Collisions, explosions, sabotage, don't drive. Bombs, guns, Abuse, don't go to school. Abduction, rape, murder, don't go out. Stay here, safe with me. Bask in my holy glow, recline before the, before the altar of information. Or after this, your soul stealing penance. Coke, Microsoft, HP. Don't leave. You might die without me. You might trust, you might drive, you might learn might live without me. Don't leave. You need me. That would be kind of interesting. My seven-year-old would be angst right now. 
regrets. Fury rage running through me, smashing everything, crushing, splintering, painting consequences, breaking me, driving me, this is my life. Fear me, abuse me, feed on me, make me understand my incapacitation, make me feel empathy, feel the burn of my wrath, contempt pulsing in my veins, burning anger, my only recourse. Lead my fury, live my hatred, die with my regret. Look, I'm just going to start calling people. <laughs> Sure. That's why it's there. Uh, what? Well, <laughs> I'm making sure. Uh, this is called Front Page. Uh oh. Tom Cruise couch jumping fiasco, mass laughing bobbleheaded suicide, attention craving artist who jumps, punishing voodoo shaman, pinpricks happy Tom and Stephen King's labyrinth. Round table jellyfish, atomic mind politics, push button reaction, everything nuclear, 3,323 red, white, blue, star spangled deaths. Front page no, Paris Hilton pussy photo, yes. What killer spoke about loneliness and poverty? American pitfalls of King Kong ego, ego feeders, brain dead hemisphere, no apathy genocides. Brangelina booked the room at Hotel Rwanda. Killer's eyes. Stalk slow, the honey breast woman. Puppy dog food poison, bad day for Snoopy. Genocide newsworthy, not in this country. From page, no. Alec Baldwin rant, yes. Run forest into traffic jam, audio blasters. Great hypocrisy test tube, baby unnatural. Loathsome baby stealer, womb frozen like glaciers. Al Gore summertime, meet Terry Shivo, euthanasia. Garfield husband, wife, feet, rape child, paper reader. Ooh. Pay a raise for Congress, more coke for Ted Haggard. We sell used cars, Tijuana sells little girl innocence. Front page no, Michael Richards racism, yes. Poppycock fighting, alpha race, voyeurism, supremacy, Hitler, Hitler youth, Americanized war criminal, talent exploiters, terrorist training camp funding, pro-American revolutions, Al-Qaeda leaders spoiled by George Bush senior screwballs, Michael Moore awakening spiritual freedom fighters. Seesaw with fat boy, no fun. We elephant ride into quicksand. Our government is lying to us each and every day. We waste away at fast food chains and drink $8 coffee. Talk about television sto shows instead of dying humanity. Mother Earth is crying. Her sons and daughters are polluted. Front page no. Sanjay cut from American Idol. Yes. Sanjaya was cut? Nobody told me. <laughs> Richard, who's left? Oh. I'm too short for a microphone. That, that helps right there, yeah. You don't want to be too close to anyone. Uh, <laughs> this is the first time using a microphone. Okay. The title of my piece is called Richard, What is a Genocide? The high school principal told me I couldn't teach poetry with profanity, so I asked the students, raise your hand if you heard of the Holocaust. In unison, their arms rose up like a poisonous gas, then straightened out like an SSS infantry. Okay, please put your hands down. Now raise your hand if you heard of the Rwanda Genocide. Blank stares mixed with curious ignorance. A quivering hand out of the crowd, half raised like a lone survivor. Liz, are you sure about that? No, she said. That's what I thought. So she asked, Richard, 
was genocide. They won't let you hear the truth at school. If that person says fuck, can't even talk about fuck, even though a 30 year senior class is pregnant. I can't teach an 18 year old girl in public school how to use a condom that will save her life, and that of the orphan she will be forced to give to the foster care system. Richard, how many 13 year olds do you know that are HIV positive? Honestly, none. But I do visit a shelter every Monday and talk with six 12 year old girls with diagnosed AIDS, while fourth graders three blocks away give little boys blowjobs during recess. I met an 11 year old gang member in the fifth ward who carries a semi automatic whip into study hall so he can make it home. And you want me to censor my language? Richard, what is genocide? Your books leave out Emmett Till and Medgar Evers, call themselves world history, and don't mention King Leopold or Diamond Mines, call themselves, call themselves politics in the modern world, and don't mention Alphardai. Richard, what is genocide? You wonder why children hide in adult bodies, lie under light color eyed contact lenses, learn to fetishize the size of the ass and simultaneously hate their lips. The students today think Chad Guerrero was a rapper from East Harlem. Still think my, the Mamiya t-shirt I was wearing is a Bob Marley. How can literacy not include Phyllis Wheatley? Schools were built in the shadows of ghosts, filtered through incest and grinding teeth, molded under veils extravagant ritual. Richard was genocide. There's a student sitting in the corner named Rosalind. I said, Rosalind, how old was she? She told me, my mother had 32 years 32 years when she died was genocide. They moved on from sterilizing Barica women, injecting indigenous sisters with hepatitis B. Now they just killed mothers with silent poison, stained their loyalty and love into veins and suffocate them. Was genocide. Jeremy's father hung himself in the box because he thought his son was ashamed of him. Was genocide. Maureen's mother gave her skin lightning cream the day before she started the sixth grade. Was genocide. She carved straight lines into her beautiful brown thighs so she can remember what it feels like to heal. Was genocide was genocide. Richard was genocide. Liz, this, this right here is genocide. Thank you. Carry one more piece. I got one. All right, this is my last piece, titled Poor People. This is to the generation that is born without a choice, born more broker than broke, more ghetto than ghetto. This one is to let the world hear your voice. Cause there's too many nowadays claiming hardship when they grew up in the hood, but with a family filled with love. And only the real strugglers know that just because you're from the project doesn't make you a thug. See, there's a difference in being ghetto and being poor. There's a difference between financial problems and being dead broke with nothing to live for. And when the ghetto wears suede palmas and shell top adidas, they made fun of the poor for wearing payless with four stripes and calling sis for adidas. See, the ghetto, the ghetto can take a bite out of a full course meal and throw the rest away. The poor eat right rice, eggs, and ketchup and consider that gourmet. So next time you see a young man with a criminal record trying to get a job, hook a brother up because that's the truth but why, behind why he sells crack and why your ass got robbed. Next time you laugh at your homie still hanging on the street, remember that's who made you what you are, the reason why you eat. Never forget the grit, the grime, the hard time, the dirt. Always remember the poor people even though it makes your heart hurt. Remember the poor people. And I'm not trying to tell you how to live, but vanity will kill you, so will MTV Cribs. Remember messy ghettoness and how you've been blessed. Remember that same God that blessed you and always got a pocket filled with Generation Next. Because they're up next to bat, next up to sharpen our rats, next to take it on the run, next to preach the science hard and they keep it bouncing on the one. So believe me when I tell you, your money is not the root of all evil. Because you will see pure hell coming when you forget about the poor people. Thanks. Hmm. Sherry? Anybody else? Who else? Father beat her, not her brother, just her. 
it wasn't due to behavior because when he, because her mother always said she was the best child that ever was. There seemed to be no reason for his actions. The only reason for his unreasonably, unreasonably cruel behavior was that he hated her, or at least she thought so. She thought so. The opposite was true. Wendy believed her father suffered from some sort of mental disorder. He seemed, there seemed to be no other reason for his cruel actions. The only reason she could think of for his violent behavior was his state of mind. Although he treated her so terribly, beating her with one of a collection of belt chains, chain belts that she had hiding in her small dark felt closet. He always forced her to pick out the one that she wanted to be beaten with that day. This was akin to rubbing salt in the open wound of her dark, tortured, and anguished soul. He also did other horrible, painful things to her. He would knock her down to the floor and kick her fiercely with steel-toed shoes about the head, neck, and back. These were company issue. All the chemical engineers working at the chemical plant wore them, or were required to wear these when they were walking from one building to the next. And they were also required to wear hard hats when walking from one building to the next. They were very much into the safety scene. The administrators of the oil company had no idea that these tools of safety were actually being used as weapons of destruction. A blow to the head could cause her medical problems. So well, he, he kicked her so viciously, she covered her, her head with her arms, protecting it as best as she could. I got the camera rolling, you gotta go. Great. I'm gonna zoom in on you. Don't zoom in, please. Oh, you're not gonna use the mic, huh? Yeah. Huh? Can y'all hear me in the back? Jason, Richard? Okay, see, they can hear me. Okay. Like Richard, I'm sure. It's a better shot. Come on, don't stop acting like a rock star, it's poetry. 